How much do physicists think about possibility? Well, they think about it in terms of probability more often, but probability just describes, and again, this is a place where I'm, I might be out of my depth and need to talk to somebody to to uh, debunk this, but the- <laughs> um, Do therapy with a physicist. Yeah, um, but probability, it seems, just describes a pattern of actuality that we've observed, right? I mean, we have, there are certain things we observe, and those are the actual things that have happened. And we have this additional story about probability. I mean, we have the frequency with which things happen, have happened in the past. Um, you know, I, I can flip a fair coin and know, I know in the abstract that I have a belief that in the limit, uh, those flips, you know, those tosses should converge on 50% heads and 50% tails. I know I have a story as to why it's not going to be exactly 50% within any arbitrary time frame. Um, but in reality, all we ever have are the observed tosses, right? And then we have an additional story that, oh, it came up heads, but it could have come up tails. Why do we think that about that last toss? And, and, and what are we claiming is true about the physics of things if we say it could have been otherwise? Well, I think we're claiming that probability is true. That it just it, it allows us to have a nice model about the world. It gives us hope yeah. about the world. Yeah. It seems that possibility has to be somewhere to be effective. It's a little, it's a little <laughs> bit like what's what's happening with the laws of it's, it, there's something metaphysically interesting about the laws of nature too, because the laws of nature. So the laws of nature impose their their work on the world, right? We see their evidence, but they're not reducible to any specific set of instances, right? So there's some structure there, but the structure isn't just a matter of the actual things. We have the actual billiard balls that are banging into each other. All of that actuality can be explained by what actual things are actually doing. But then we have this notion that in addition to that, we have the laws of nature that are making, they're explaining this act, but, it, but how are the laws of nature an additional thing in addition to just the actual things that are actually affect causally, and if if they're if they are an additional thing, in how are they effective? If not, they're not among the actual things that are just actually banging around, yeah. And so, to some I degree, see. for that, possi possibly has to be hiding somewhere for the laws of nature to, to be, be possible. <laughs> like to, for, yeah, for anything to be possible, it has to be. It has it's to have a closet somewhere. I'm sure it's just where all the possibility goes. It has to be attached to something. So. I mean, you don't think many worlds is that? It, yeah, because well, many worlds still exist. Well, because we're in this strand of that multiverse. Yeah, right. So it's still, still, you have just a local instance of what is actual. Yeah, and then if it proliferates elsewhere where you can't be affected by it, many worlds more has, actuality. You can't really connect with the other. Yeah, yeah, and so many worlds is just a statement of basically everything that can happen happens somewhere. Yeah, that's, yeah, you know, and that's, I mean, maybe that's not an entirely kosher formulation of it, but it, it seems pretty close. So, so, but there's whatever happens, right? In fact, there's, you know, relativistically, there's a, there's an, you know, the, the Einstein's original notion of a block universe seems to suggest this. And I, it's been a while since I've been in a conversation with a physicist where I've gotten a chance to ask about the standing of this concept in physics currently. I don't, I don't hear it discussed much, but the idea of a block universe is that you know, space-time exists as an, a totality. And our sense that we are traveling through space-time, where there's a, a real difference between the past and the future, that that's an illusion of just our, you know, you know, weird, the, weird, the weird slice we're taking of, of this larger object. But on some level, it's like, you know, you're reading a novel, the, the last page of the novel exists just as much as the first page, when you're in the middle of it, and they're just, you know, if that's if we're living in anything like that, then there's no such thing as possibility. I, I would it would seem that's just what is actual. So, as a matter of our experience, moment to moment, I think it's totally compatible with that being true that there is only what is actual, and that sounds 
to the uh, the naive ear, that sounds like it would be depressing and disempowering and confining, but it's anything but. It's actually, it, it's a circumstance of pure discovery. Like you have no idea what's going to happen next, right? You don't know who you're going to be tomorrow. You're only by tendency seeming to resemble yourself from yesterday. I mean, there's, there's way more freedom in all of that than, than it's, you know, it seems true to many people. And yet, the basic insight is that you're not you're not in the, the the real freedom is is the recognition that you're not in control of anything everything is just happening including your thoughts and intentions and moods so life is the is, is a process of continuous discovery you're part of the universe yeah you are you are just this i mean it's it's the miracle that the the universe is illuminated to itself as itself where you sit and you're mm-hmm. and you're continually discovering what your life is and then you're you have this layer at which you're telling yourself a story that you already know what your life is and you know exactly you know who you should be and what's you know what's about to happen or you're struggling to form a confident opinion about all of that and yet there is this this fundamental mystery to everything even the most familiar experience we're all NPCs in in a most marvelous video game. Maybe, although my my game my sense of gaming is does not run as deep as to know what I'm committing to there. A, a non okay. it's a non playing character. You're more yeah, yeah. non player. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you're more you're more of a Mario Kart guy. Yeah, I, yeah. I went back. I was an, an original video gamer, but it's been a long time since I. <laughs> I mean, I was I was there for Pong. <laughs> I remember when I saw the, the first Pong in a restaurant in. Uh, I think it was like Benny Hanna's or something. They had a pong and a table, and that was. Isn't just, it amazing? That was that an amazing moment when you. Y- you, Sam Harris, might live from pong, to yeah. the invention and deployment of a super intelligent system. Yeah, well, that that happened fast. If it happens any time in my lifetime, from from pong to AGI. Yeah.